Only one thing stands between Elon Musk and becoming the world's first trillionaire. And that one thing is... Market headwinds. You thought I was gonna say Rivian, didn't you? Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but we might as well just go ahead and bow down to our Bezos and Musk overlords. The future is inevitable. We'll cover their world domination in a future video. Right now, it's Rivian time. Let's go! Okay, so Rivian. What even is it? Well, it's a company founded in 2009 by this super smart MIT graduate. Look at this guy. So hipster cool. I want to buy a car from that guy. I wonder what he's looking at. Probably the future. Anyway, even if you've never heard of Rivian, they are a legit competitor in the electric vehicle space. They aren't producing vaporware, and they have cars that actually run and drive. I'm looking at you, Nicola. Just kidding, that was a joke, please don't sue me. Rivian has developed a platform that they have dubbed a skateboard, and they claim it could be used to build a wide variety of vehicles, and could even be adapted for use by other companies. The platform is designed to have a low center of gravity due to the battery placement, which should help with handling and stability. It also allows for even weight distribution between the four wheels. Currently, they have two vehicles that use this platform, the R1S, which is the seven seat sport utility vehicle, and the R1T, which is the electric pickup truck. Today, we're focusing on the truck. So let's take a look at this thing. From the side, it looks like a clean, modern truck with a handsome profile. Remind you of anyone? Then we get to the front and wow, that is unique. The headlights are stadium shaped and a large horizontal lighted bar spans the entire width. Fun fact, the horizontal bar changes to a green color when the vehicle is fully charged. The rear mirrors the front with a lighted horizontal bar all the way across as well. The inside is also very modern, but nothing too crazy. It has leather seating, sustainably sourced wood in certain places, and is equipped with a large central display. Fancy. There's also an additional smaller digital display with configurable gauges. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are expected to be standard features. Size-wise, it sits somewhere between a Dodge Ram and a Mini Cooper. Here's an image so you can get a sense of scale. Hmm, that doesn't seem right. I thought the Mini was smaller than that. Oh well, who cares? So what are the specs on this thing? That's pretty much all anyone cares about anyway, right? My truck is faster than your truck. Yeah, well my truck has four motors. Four motors? What? Yeah, this thing has four motors. There's a motor that drives each wheel as part of its all-wheel drive system. It can send power to each wheel independently to maximize traction over various terrain. Those four motors help the truck to produce up to 750 horsepower and 829 foot-pounds of torque, which should make it good for a 0-60 to 60 time of under 3 seconds. Okay, that is ridiculous. Electricity is so cool. Oh yeah, the four motor thing. It also allows the R1T to do a tank turn at low speeds. The wheels on each side of the truck rotate in opposite directions and basically spin the truck like a, wait for it, a tank. Hence the name, Tank Turn. I don't know if I actually need that feature, but if I had the money, I would buy one of these things just to take it out to a parking lot and do donuts like all day every day. In addition to its cool party tricks. It's also a pretty capable vehicle. It can tow up to 11,000 pounds and has a payload of 1,760 pounds. Even with all that power, the top end trim still has a range of 400 miles on a single charge. However, in the winter, I would expect that range to drop from 400 to somewhere around 23 miles. Note that I have not verified the veracity of that claim. It also seems like it should be able to hold its own off-road. It comes with standard adjustable air ride suspension, which will allow the vehicle to be raised for up to 14 and a half inches of ground clearance. 
It can also wade through over three and a half feet of water and climb a 45 degree incline. Its approach angle is 34.8 degrees and it has a departure angle of 30.5 degrees. I bet it's still no match for the Ford Bronco though. Where are my Bronco peeps? Anywhere? The R1T does seem to be really geared towards adventure oriented consumers. They even partnered with this guy who climbs around on rocks for a living. So if you're one of those adventure oriented consumers that I was talking about, you'll be happy to know that it comes with an expandable and collapsible crossbar system that allows for mounting gear over the bed as well as the cabin. You can even pitch a tent up there if you want, because nothing says roughing it like camping on top of your $80,000 truck. You could probably even bring more than one tent if you wanted, because this thing has all sorts of storage. In addition to the bed, there's an 11.1 .1 cubic foot front trunk, and perhaps the coolest thing I've ever seen, 12 cubic feet of storage between the cab and the bed. Okay, I take that back. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's a slide out truck camper that comes stocked with various meats and cheeses from the factory. I think I should probably point out that this is a one man operation here. I don't really do any fact checking. Anyway, while you're roughing it, you want to have a place to plug in your various electrical devices. So Rivian has kindly hooked you up with three 110 volt outlets and also a built in air compressor for uh, whatever. And after a long weekend of roughing it, what is the last thing that you want to do? Drive home. Well, Rivian has you covered. Or at least, eventually they will. This thing is rated as level 3 autonomous. Which, for people who haven't committed the various levels of autonomy to memory, means that it allows for drivers to take their eyes off the road and allow the vehicle to take them wherever. It also handles things like emergency braking. Okay, so the catch here is that while it's fitted with all the necessary sensors for autonomous driving, it won't be ready to drive on its own until Rivian finishes the software required to, you know, actually tell it what to do. Here's to hoping that software rollout goes slightly better than Windows Vista. Okay, so the cost. Originally, Rivian said that there would be three models ranging from $70,000 to $80,000. But they have recently stated that the $69,000 price point would be for a nicely equipped vehicle and that the base model pricing would actually be much lower. I like to call that the Cybertruck effect. Thanks, Tesla. Competition is good for everyone, right? So how do you get one? You hop on Rivian's site and you give them $1,000. Then you save a bunch of money so you can hand it right over to Rivian sometime next year when these things start rolling out. Okay, so that's the Rivian R1T. So what do you think? This or the Tesla Cybertruck? If you were picking one of the two, what's it gonna be? Do you want the Mad Max vehicle or do you want something that's gonna fit in in everyday traffic? Comment section below, tell me about it. Tesla or Rivian? Let's debate. And if you like the video, click a click a on the thumbs up button below and on the subscribe button. Have a good one and I will see you in the electrified future.